All right, David Harry here. So, have you ever asked yourself this question? Does my Mac's internal storage get slower when I start filling it up? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is a massive, big, fat, yes, it does. And what's even worse is by how much it slows down, which is exactly what I am going to show you in this video. So before I start doing some data transfer, and let me just explain a few things here. So as we can see, I am on an M4 Max MacBook Pro. And as far as the SSD is concerned, let me just show you, I have got an internal storage amount of one terabyte, of which I have got 782 gigabytes spare. So that's like the condition that the Mac's in right now. Now what I've got here is an external Thunderbolt 5 SSD. Now this is using the latest Acasus TB501 Pro Thunderbolt 5 or 80 gigabits per second enclosure. And inside of that, I have got a Western Digital SN850X4 terabyte, which is currently my most favorite SSD to put inside of these very fast enclosures. And inside of the enclosure or the SSD, I've got a few folders here, which is what I will be using to copy to the desktop just to start filling up the internal storage so we can see what the performance goes like. Now, just before I go any further, I'm just going to run some very quick disk speed tests with the Blackmagic disk speed test utility. Now, of course, in, in the videos where I'm doing like, you know, dedicated builds and speed tests, I always say to people, this really isn't the best way to gauge the speed of an SSD. However, what it will do is give us, you know, a good fair kind of idea as to the average speeds. And it's also going to be good for comparing two SSDs, which is what I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do first of all let me select target drive i'm going to go to my home folder here so what i'm going to be doing now is just testing the max internal storage or the, yeah internal storage i was going to say ram then that would have been wrong right so as you can see there the write speed is over 6,000 megabytes per second and the read speed is over 5,000 megabytes per second now this might fluctuate a little bit here and there but in general as we can see they are the speeds we're getting from the internal one terabyte storage on this m4 max so just over 6,000 for the write and just over 5,000 for the read okay now what i'm going to do is just to quickly show you what the external storage is doing and don't forget this is a thunderbolt 5 uh, enclosure which is the acasus tb501 pro with the four terabytes western digital sn850x in it so what we're seeing there is about 5,900 for the write and about 5,800 for the read. So I'll just let that pop through a few times there. Okay, as we can see, that's fairly consistent. So around 5,900 for the write and around 5,800 for the read. And interestingly, the read speed on the external drive is faster than the internal speed of the Mac. Also, what you would find as well, if you were to put one of these particular Western Digitals as a boot drive, say in a Windows PC, you're also gonna get faster write speeds than what the Mac does as well. But anyway, as we can see there, we've definitely got a baseline for like the numbers that we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do is just launch Activity Monitor. Let me just open up the external drive to start copying some files over. Now, I am not going to do my usual thing here, which is where I time the files being moved and then do some kind of manual calculation for the bitrate. Because with this, what I'm doing here, it's not so much the bitrate that we're concerned about. It's the drop in speed, which we will definitely see shortly. Anyway, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to copy a 100 gigabyte folder over. Let me just show you what the info is for this folder. So that's 100,000 megabytes, which is 100 gigabytes. And it's got like 99 items in it's just pictures and videos and stuff. Now, let's just have a quick look down here as I do this. So we'll have a look at the graph. And then importantly, we will have a look at like the data written number here as I do it. So let me just pop that over. Now, as we're going to see here, this is going to be really impressive. 
So that's about, well, it's saying over six gigabytes. Um, yeah, that's extremely fast. That's actually faster than what I thought it would be. But importantly, it's nearly copied. And <laughs> look at that. Okay, like I don't know how long that took, but that was super quick for 100 gigabytes. As we could see, the graph was kind of ruler flat, and that was saying over six gigabytes per second. So super duper, like impressive. Now what I'm going to do to start filling up the drive is to move a 500 gigabyte folder to the desktop. So let me just show you something here. So inside that folder, we've got 500,000 uh, 500, megabytes, 500 gigabytes. That consists of 1,563 items. Although this isn't a speed test. So, you know, we're just looking at the overall number of like gigabytes and megabytes that I'm moving now to the desktop. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to blur out the progression of it. And I will explain why now. So let me just start this moving over. <coughs> right. The reason why I'm blaring out these numbers right now, it's not because I'm being sneaky or underhanded. What it is, I'm just about to do another video, which is going to show the effects or, you know, what happens when the SLC cache has been kind of depleted with the internal storage here. So if I were to show you what's going on here, it's going to spoil the results for the next video, which is going to go up very quickly after this one. So like I say, I'm just keeping this this blade right now just so that you can't see what's going on because I'll show you that in a separate video. What it is, this particular video is just to show people what happens when the max internal storage starts getting full. And then the next video is to show the effect of what happens when the SLC cache gets depleted. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just speed through this until I've copied this folder over. And then what I'm going to do is to then copy another 100 gig folder over. Okay, so this folder is now uh, copied over. So what I'm going to do is just to show you how much spare space we now have on the max internal storage. And as we can see, 182 gigabytes. So that's still a lot of spare space. Now what I'm going to do is to copy that 100 gig folder again back to the desktop. In fact, let me just renamed the 100 gig folder that's already on the desktop so what i'm going to do is to copy this one back over and as we can see we have clearly got well enough space to copy it to but watch what happens to the actual write speed when i do this so yeah here we go check this out right that looks good oh no it's not oh dear right <laughs> 2.5 but, but let's wait a minute oh there we go 1.5 1.4 okay so as we can clearly see although there was like you know a lot of space still spare on the ssd moving this folder over now has dropped down massively so you know we're less than a quarter of the speed that we were at oh sorry that we were at when i moved over the first 100 gig folder when you know there was like over 700 gigs worth of free space so for me this is really disappointing now i'm going to explain why it's disappointing and all but the most hardened mac fanboys out there will probably agree with me on this we pay so much money for these MacBooks or Mac computers and stuff, these Apple Silicon ones. And especially if you start bumping up the SSDs. So say, for instance, you buy something with a half terabyte and you bump it up to like a one terabyte or start going up to even like four terabytes and whatnot. You're paying well more than any other SSD out there, right? And for me, the problem here is if Apple are going to be charged us so much money for these SSDs which are way way more expensive than any other SSD on the planet then we should be getting like perfect performance all the time now I do appreciate we are going to have certain limitations within SSDs however the SSD that I have got in my external drive there which is the Western Digital one if you were to put that up against the max internal SSD say for instance if that were put into a Windows PC, it would 
beat it hands down all over the place it would beat it for slc cache it would beat it for read and write it's just a much better ssd than what we've got inside the max and although some people might say well the western digitals are quite expensive they are like a fraction of the price of what the max internal storage costs anyways i'll leave it at that i just thought that this video might be a point of interest to some people out there and you know for me personally yeah it's super disappointing because you know we're being charged all of this money and we should be getting the absolute best ssd in the world and we quite clearly aren't anyway if you keep an eye on the channel there's going to be this other video to do with showing you the effect of the slc cache on this exact same setup here and also i will follow that up very quickly with a build video and a speed test video for this a case of setup that i've got for my external storage here which once again is the new acasus tb501 pro 80 gigabits per second thunderbolt 5 in inverted commas because it obviously is usb 4 as well gen version 2 or whatever and i will show the build of that and the speeds and stuff for it because it's an absolutely fantastic ssd in fact you've seen the actual like you know speed test that i just done in the black magic speed test there so if that interests you then definitely look out for that video anyway if you've liked this video please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely fantastic i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now